What up, B Squad? It is your boy JB, and we are here today, you guys, with the review for Bell Collective Season 3 uh, Reunion Part 2, you guys. So, I can say this right here, right now Reunion Part 2, I ain't gonna be on here that long because I don't really feel like it gave a whole lot. But you guys will definitely tell me what you guys thought about it down in the comment section below. But before we do get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet, then I'll need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know the routine. You can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and also by turning on your post notifications, you guys. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's discuss Bell Collective. Season 3, Reunion Part 2, shall we? All right, you guys, so as I previously stated, I don't really expect to be on here long because the reunion, it was a bunch of nothing, honestly. So we started the reunion up where we ended, you guys. You guys remember last week we ended with the almost fight between Latrice, Marie, and... um. Letitia. Letitia should never want to fight nobody. Letitia should want to fight that person who did this dress, did that wig, did her makeup. That's the person you need to fight because that person don't like you. Because like I said last week about Letitia, her boobs don't fit. Her boobs do not fit that dress. She is uncomfortable in that dress because she is sitting there with her legs cocked wide open and she looked like she can't fucking breathe. No shade, no tea. It just that's just, just what it looks like to me on this te her television screen, right? And for Glenn to say that you know the queens don't come out, they what, whatever he said to her, to you know deal with snakes. I was like, but she's a snake. You know what? Never mind. I don't really feel no type of way about Letitia, but I don't like the way she's rocking and the way she's moving because it's just kind of phony as hell. So we get back to the stage and then we go through Marie's package. And I was like, y'all are really trying to make this out like Marie had a storyline this season, but she did not. Like they showed that thing with her going out on a date with that guy player. And then they showed her story, her stuff with her mama Lula. And, you know, I do want to extend, you know, well wishes and thoughts, well thoughts and prayers for her mother. Because I guess Lula is still struggling with sobriety. And I hate to hear that. But it's like I had said previously. Lula is only going to go. Lula will only get the help when Lula wants to help. You can. It's like, they, it's like the saying goes. You can lead a horse to water. But you cannot make the horse drink. And that's the case with Lula. You can take her to rehab. You can take her to therapy. But Lula is only going to do it when Lula is ready. And I've said it plenty of times before. I don't think that Lula has hit her rock bottom. Now, those are my opinions. You know, you guys can tell me yours in the comment section below. Also, Marie talking about she likes a conservative man. I was like, oh, OK. Carlos, you've also been, you, Carlos, you have also been on social media because you got that whole LaBoosie comment from Twitter. I've been calling him Lil Boosie since season one of Bell Collective. So what threw me for loop in part two was when Marie was talking about the fact that she is a truth seeker and she's making the girls clock in for work. I was like, excuse me, ma'am. She's talking about she's making Tambra clock in and she's making Latrice. Well, Latrice clocked in this season. I was like, ma'am, when have it? you clocked in is a question because you ain't clocked in either because you told Tambra at one point in this episode that demand was the reason for her storyline i was like well let's go down memory lane right yo deadbeat ass son was the reason for your storyline season two your husband now that was your that was a real storyline you and cedric that was your storyline season one and that was that was your life so Cedric was your, so, you know, your marriage was your storyline one season. Then your deadbeat ass son was your storyline the next season. And now your mama is your storyline this season. And again, I don't have a problem. I'm not shaming her or anything of that nature. 
But for you to sit there and talk about Timber not having a storyline, man, neither do you. If the shoe fits, wear that motherfucker, right? And so, if you if if you're such a truth seeker, never mind. I was about to say something, but I'm gonna keep it to myself. So then we also found out that Marie was um, someone who put out Timber's business that she was pregnant before you know it was named on said on the show, and I was like, damn. Like I get not liking a person and whatnot. I get all of that, but to do something so devious and deceptive, and then you're talking about the fact that if you're going to be around the bells, you should tell us everything, and, you know, talking about her life was, they lives when, if, if, talking about the man that Tambra was involved with, if her life was so in danger, she should have told him. I was like, but ma'am, you met with that man, so what are you talking about? If you felt like this man was such a danger why did you meet with him? Like, the fuck? Your life obviously wasn't in that much danger that you sat down with the man. And I, and I don't think the camera crew went with you. So you met with him outside of filming. So Marie, 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 Marie Monroe, I just really want you to just kind of zip it. Because you're not an innocent person in this situation. And I want you to stop trying to p- pretend that way. But hey. You guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And let's pause here and move forward. So the men joined the stage, you guys. So we got Cliff on the stage. We got Glendale. We got JJ with gosh darn it in his in diamonds or, or whatever that was in the back of his head. I was like, oh, this is a country mess. Then you got Willie. I was like, what the hell does Willie have on? This is ugly. I just kept sitting looking like, what is this? I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was, but it was atrocious. Now, something that I noticed when we got to part, when we got to the husbands joining the stage, we mostly spent our time talking about Latrice and Cliff. I was like, so there's nothing else we can talk about? Like, Nothing else happened, so we we just going to sit here and just sit on Latrice and Cliff. Now, Latrice, you guys know I like Latrice, right? I like I like all the bills. I don't dislike any of the bills, but Latrice. Let me say this, let me say this preference it by saying this before I even get into my thoughts and opinions because the question came up about abuse in Latrice's marriage, right? Now, do I th- Think that a Latrice is being abused physically? Absolutely not. I don't think that that's happening, and she she denounced that, right? But from what we saw when they went to M Bar, it might not be physical, but it damn sure was verbal abuse. Because I mean, he called you a bitch, and Carlos asked, "Was that the first time he called her a bitch?" And Latrice kind of teeter-tottered around that question. And I was like, Latrice, it's a yes or no answer, right? And yeah, you guys, again, do I think that Cliff has put his hands on Latrice? No. Do I think it's been verbal? Because she said she calls him a bitch. So he probably has done it in retaliation. And that wasn't the question, Latrice. The question was, does he call you a bitch? And looking at Cliff, I wouldn't be surprised if he said it, right? Now, you guys know how I feel. I don't, again, I'll I'll repeat this and I'll stress this. I don't dislike any of the Bells, right? I have nothing against none of them. The problem that I have is with Aikisha. And this season, I grew to like Aikisha. But my problem with Aikisha was because at one point, Latrice said that half of the women on this stage have been in abusive relationships. And she wanted to know who was the half. I was like, look, Akeisha, if it don't apply to you, baby, zip it and, and, and just throw it in the trash, right? I can I can get I can kind of give you who I think she might have been. So half of the women, right? Half, right? How many bells are there? There are six bells. There are six bells, right? It's Latrice, Letitia, Sophia, Shantae, So Gucci, Tambra, M- Marie, and Aikisha. 
So there are six bells, right? Half is three. We already know about one of them, Tambra. The other one, the other two, I'm going to take a wild guess on. Triple S. And the Queen of Zamunda over there. <laughs> like, those are the three that I can come up with. So, it don't take a rocket scientist to know that she said there it's half, half. And then she's talking about which half. I just gave you the half that, and I'm saying allegedly, I don't know that that's true. The only one that we know about is Tambra. I'm just assuming, I'm making a, I'm just taking a wild goose chase guess that so Sophia Shantae Soguchi and, uh, you know, the Queen of Zamunda over there is part of, of, the, other, of the other two. Just a guess. Again, I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm just saying that's a wild guess. Hell, Marie could be part of that, that half. Hell, I, hell if I know. But, uh, yeah, I was, like I said, part two was mostly about Latrice. The first half, the first segment was Marie, but as you can see, Marie had no damn storyline because that was it. And we ain't came back to her. Then after that, uh, actually, we'll pause here and wrap up the episode, you guys. All right, you guys. Now, the last part of the reunion is Josh. Josh has, Josh has joined the reunion. And I was just sitting here thinking to myself, why? Why is Josh here? Josh thinks that he was the reason for the season. I was like, uh-huh. Okay. No, sir. Not at all. So, Josh, 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 Josh. You might not feel as if you inserted yourself when it came to Latrice's marriage, but, bro, man, you absolutely did. You absolutely did. Here's the thing. You can have your friends, male, female, male or female, that are in relationships and we all going to vent, you know, with our relationships, I think a lot of people vent to their friends, be like, you know, this person, this motherfucker doing this, getting on my nerves, not doing this, right? But you have to be, the thing is, to be a good friend, a good friend is all about listening to your friend, right? Let your friend vent. You may feel a way about their spouse and whatnot. Let your friend vent and be like, you know, do you want my advice? Do you want my, you know, you want my little two cents? If they say, yeah, give it to them. If they say no, keep it to yourself, right? And I think that's what Josh should have done with Latrice. Be like, do you want me to tell you what I think and feel? And if she would have said yes, then give her your opinion. And just, and just leave it at that. Give your opinion. Don't get invested because... If your friend chooses to stay with him and you still sitting over here mad, then it's just going to be like, you know, girl, don't tell me shit if you're going to continue to stay with the motherfucker, right? That's just how I feel. So, this is where I started to get a little bit confused in the reunion. We had this, y'all know how Cliff feels when he talks. Cliff mumbles, so I, I, it was hard as hell for me to understand what the hell Cliff was saying. I know at one point Cliff was talking about apologizing to Josh. Josh said he wanted to apologize to Cliff. I was with Cliff. If he want to apologize, just say it. Cliff, also, the term that you was looking for is not a, if you want an apology, apology. No, you meant to say if you want to apologize, Josh, apologize. And I agree with that. But then it just got weirder and weirder and weirder. It got weird, especially when Carlos asked Josh to come over to where they were. I was like, Carlos, what are you asking him to do? I was so confused by that, that situation. But okay. Then after that, here's the thing. I want to say this, and I said it last night on Twitter, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to preface this by saying I don't think that Cliff is homophobic by no means. But when Carlos and Latrice was talking about the relationship that both Cliff and, you know, Josh have with each other, Cliff basically downplayed their relationship. And I wondered to myself, is Cliff downplaying the relationship because 
Josh is gay. And once again, I'm going to say this loudly and hear me clearly. I'm not saying that I think Cliff is homophobic. I don't believe that. What I'm saying is, you know how even with people who are in relationships or people who are DL, right? They don't want people to know that they associate. They don't want people to know that they're gay. And this, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear it up in just a second. DL, DL men and women don't want people to know that they, they like men or they like women. It's not what I'm trying to, where I'm drawing a comparison is some straight men don't want it to be known that they have gay male friends because they don't want people to be like, oh, if you're friends with him, then that must mean that you're gay as well. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that Cliff is homophobic, but I do probably, I do wonder if he feels like, damn, if I say that me and him have a great relationship, will people then question my sexuality? That's all. But that's the reunion, you guys. Um, like I said, nothing significant for me. I want you guys to tell me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on, and share the video, you guys. Until the next time, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves, you guys. Wash your hands, be blessed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.